All right, folks, so I found this Gary Ginsler interview. It looks like he did an interview yesterday for uh, Yahoo News. Nice 20-minute interview. I mean, Gary Ginsler pretty much explains exactly what's going to be happening in the crypto space over the next year. There's no speculation anymore, folks. Um, it does look like pretty much all these U.S.-based exchanges are going to have to be have to register. Um, they're not going to be able to use customer funds to commingle, which, of course, is a good thing because that's what's caused every crypto collapse for the last couple years. And a lot of these cryptos, including your favorite cryptos, probably most altcoins are going to be deemed securities. And that probably will bring a lot more volume back into Bitcoin, as a lot of these exchanges probably aren't going to be allowed to, um, to list coins like Ethereum, Cardano, Solano, Dogecoin until they get compliant. And some exchanges just won't be able to get compliant. So this is a very interesting interview. I want to do a little, little commentary on it. A lot of people are anti-Gary Gensler. A lot of people are anti-SEC. If you notice, most of these people who are anti-SEC and anti-Gary Gensler are the biggest scammers in the space. If you've been promoting scams, like, you know, PAM token for the last couple years, you're probably not a big fan of Gary Gensler because he made it so you can't do it anymore. So anyway, let's listen to this interview. And basically, folks, I mean, he's laying out exactly what's going to happen. It's not rocket science. We know what's going to happen now in the crypto space. So um, let's not pretend we don't, okay? I'm joined now by the chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler, here at SC. So many lawmakers are pointing fingers at the SEC over FTX's collapse. You have said numerous times, rules, security laws are in place and they apply to crypto. This is an issue of non-compliance. Why didn't the SEC enforce rules on the books? Could that have prevented FTX's collapse? We, we are enforcing them. The Securities and Exchange Commission, I couldn't be prouder, uh, and started under my predecessor, Jay Clayton, has brought over 100 enforcement cases uh, in this space. And what we've said to what is a, a largely a non-compliant field, there's about 10,000 of these uh, crypto tokens. Mm -hmm. And then there's not just dozens, but maybe hundreds of uh, service providers, uh, broker-dealers, they might call themselves exchanges. I might call themselves other things. You might think of them as the casinos, where, wherein the investing public is looking for a better future. And because most of these tokens are securities, that means that the storefronts, if you wish, or the casinos, um, need to come into compliance with their time-tested laws. And what that means is basically not using customer funds as many of them do. Their business model right now is offering the public, they say, they're purporting to offer them an interest return in crypto, four, eight, 12, sometimes 15 or even 20% returns, and then possibly trading against their customers, trading ahead of their customers, lending that out. Anywhere else in finance, these conflicts are not allowed and they're separated out. So we have publicly been saying to these crypto intermediaries, they might call themselves crypto lending, they might call them crypto exchanges, these crypto intermediaries, in essence, the casinos, mm -hmm. if I might say it again, um, to come into compliance with the law. We brought a number of actions, crypto exchange Poloniex last year in September of 2021, when a large exchange, Coinbase, wanted to get into the crypto lending space, we said that would not be compliant with the laws. Now, that's very interesting, folks. So Coinbase last year wanted to be just like BlockFi, just like Celsius. They wanted to be able to take your money and lend it out. But because Coinbase is a U.S.-based exchange that has to fall under SEC regulation, um, the SEC said they could not do it. Think if Coinbase was not in the United States and they were able to lend out all your funds. They'd be just like Celsius and BlockFi right now. So the SEC saved you. If you're in a U.S.-based exchange, the SEC saved you. Now, a lot of people say, well, FTX. Well, there is a rumor that FTX, U.S., is actually solvent, and those people probably will get their money back because they weren't allowed to trade with your money. So a lot of people are saying, oh, the SEC hasn't saved anybody. Well, the SEC can only do so much. You know, if your house gets robbed, it's almost like saying, well, the police force is useless. Yeah, mine, why even have a police force? My house got robbed. Well, they can't be everywhere. But they are taking enforcement action. 
and it does look they want like they want to probably label most crypto a security. Now, does that mean your crypto is going to go to zero? Some might, but most of these cryptos will probably just become compliant or they'll be sold on compliant exchanges. And most likely one of those exchanges will be Coinbase or maybe Binance.us, um, things like that. But, you know, the SEC is doing everything they should have done. Should they have been doing more? Sure. But there's only so much they can do with a, with a small amount of people. And if you're in Coinbase, that's why it's the most trusted exchange right now, because Gary Gensler didn't allow them to take your money and turn it into a BlockFi. The way they were set up, we brought actions against crypto lending platforms, including BlockFi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will continue to be a vigorous uh, securities regulator, but I really do suggest to these intermediaries, these storefronts, these casinos, if you wish, to come into compliance, work with the SEC to get into compliance, disaggregate these businesses. Um, so, so given that uh, you've laid out that firms cannot use customer assets to trade with. Our laws say this. And, Congress has right, said this. You right. can't use so, somebody's so, stock assets either. But that's either. exactly what FTX was doing. So it sounds like they were in flagrant violation of SEC law. I can't Can speak we... to any one case or any one situation. Okay. But our securities law... He can't speak to that case because most likely they're going after Sam Bigman fried like a motherfucker right now. So, you know... All these BitBoy videos you see right now, oh, Gary Gensler, he's in on it with Cam Kevin O'Leary and SBF, and they're all in it together. No, 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 no. Do you not understand how an investigation works? I understand if you're a complete moron, you're a crackhead, you don't get it. It takes time to conduct an investigation, folks. You don't, you don't just, it doesn't happen from the snap of a finger. I mean, I investigate workman's comp cases I have for 20 years. Even those cases take years. And that's a workman's comp. We're talking maybe $100,000 that these, that these claimants are getting paid out. That takes years. This is a multi-billion dollar scheme they're investigating. This is why he's not talking about it, because they're investigating him. And most likely, they already have the Alameda um, girl, Ellison or whatever her name is. Most likely, she's already working with them. So, you know... We're going to listen further, but this is very interesting. And folks, this interview is everything you need to know what's going to be happening in crypto in 2023, 2024. There's no more speculation, okay? This is it. That's why I'm talking about this interview today. I say that you need to properly segregate customer funds. You also shouldn't be running a broker-dealer or a hedge fund and an exchange. The New York Stock Exchange doesn't also have a hedge fund on the side right. and trade against their customers. Right, so to your point, you know, FTX was reportedly using <clears throat> more than half of customer assets to fund risky bets at Alameda Research. As you said, broker dealers are explicitly banned from trading with customer assets. You suggested to me back in July that perhaps um, that this would apply, traditional broker rules would apply to crypto firms, but they, do they, apply. Should, they should be tailored to crypto as well. So can we expect rules that are specifically tailored to crypto on this and other areas next year? Look, th this is a field that has caught the worldwide public attention around the globe. Um, I, would, I would remind uh, the public, if I could, this is a highly speculative asset class. These 10,000 projects, many will fail because entrepreneurs in, in all sorts of walks of, of business fail. Many will fail also because uh, history tells us that we don't need and don't use m micro currencies. We have the dollar, we have the yen, we have the euro, we have the sterling, the pound. There's a reason for that economically. But if the investing public wants to invest in these tokens, they need the appropriate disclosure, just like they get the disclosure from the companies you might invest in in the public markets. And the broker dealers and the exchanges and the hedge funds, same thing. There's nothing incompatible about our securities laws and crypto. It's really just that there's a sort of a a worldwide market, much of this is offshore. Um, I can't speak to any one 
uh, matter, but I can quote from the bankruptcy court mm -hmm. that just 2% of the customer assets at FTX were U.S. Mm -hmm. So it just gives you a sense of how much of this is a worldwide market as well. Right, but can we expect tailored rules for crypto in 2023? What are your goals for regulating crypto next year? I've got one goal is that these platforms, the exchanges, the lending platforms come into compliance. They can do that appropriately, working with the SEC, mm -hmm or we can continue on the course with more enforcement actions, and I would have to say that the runway is getting shorter. There you go, folks. I'm gonna do a part two on this too, because this is kind of a 20 minute video and I wanna do some commentary. He just basically summed it up. If you don't come into compliance, if you're a US-based exchange, or you're operating in the U.S., if you don't come into compliance in 2023, 2024, they're going to be shutting you out or suing your ass. So, folks, there's no speculation anymore. The SEC is probably coming in pretty strong on crypto. All these exchanges are going to have to get regulated. Many of these tokens probably will get labeled a security. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, if it gets labeled a security, it's over. I don't think so. Um, I still hold my Cardano my Theta and all the other coins, but I do think all of them will eventually get labeled as security, just like stocks are labeled as a security. Will that maybe cause an initial dump and maybe people are gonna take money out of these altcoins and put it into Bitcoin? Maybe, but eventually I do believe all these high value altcoins will do very, very well. I still think Cardano is gonna hit $20 in 2024. Theta is gonna hit $20. Um, Ethereum is gonna hit $10,000. But there is going to be a rocky period in 2023 because compliance has to happen with the SEC. There's too many scams out there. There's too many people like BitBoy, like Crypto Banter. Um, I mean, you can go down the list that are that are just shilling people, unregulated exchanges, shilling people scam tokens. It's been going on too long. You're seeing a lot of these people now have gotten letters like BitBoy got an SEC letter. It's all stopping within the next year. And crypto will will be taken more seriously. So whenever you see somebody going after Gary Gensler, going after the SEC, going after the government, you have to ask yourself, why are they doing it? Why doesn't like why doesn't BitBoy like the SEC? Why doesn't Crypto Banter ran the man like the SEC? Because they are stopping them from doing what they are doing, scamming you, sending you the Bybit links so you can leverage all your money and lose it. Taking, taking millions of dollars to promote scam tokens like PAMP token. That's all illegal under SEC regulations. And that, and that you're, these guys are hurting their pocketbook. Just like I always use the, the bank robber analogy. Does the bank robber like the FBI? Does the bank robber like the armed security that's in the bank? Of course not. Why? Because that's hurting them from, from fucking you over, from stealing from you. So all these people you see anti-SEC and anti-Gary Gensler, one, they're either criminals, they've been shilling you scams the last couple of years, or two, they're just ignorant and they don't understand the facts. We need Gary Gensler to come in here and regulate this stuff. This is an unregulated space that's a complete shit show right now. Did you not see FTX? Everything's collapsed, folks. Celsius, BlockFi, Voyager. Um, I mean, we can just name them all. All the co all the coins that collapsed. UST, Luna. I mean, Sam. The whole Sam Bankman Fried situation. I mean, there's. I can't even think of them all. There's ten more. I just can't think of them. That everything's just collapsed this year because they were all unregulated scams. So this has to stop now. This is a great interview. I'm going to do a part two later. Um, but Gary Gensler and the SEC are are going are going into regulation this year, and I do expect most coins to be labeled a security at least within the next year or two. Um, I don't know when, and I think if you're going to be a U.S. U.S. based customer, you're pretty much going to have to use a compliant exchange which is good folks wouldn't you have rather been on coinbase or binance.us than ftx international or one of these other exchanges poloniex or whatever that got that gets hacked and you lose all your money the the u.s based exchanges are not allowed to commingle your money he just said it coinbase tried last year they wanted to be just like blockfi and celsius and gary gensler said no he said, no, motherfucker, you can't do it because you're going to lose everybody's money. And it was a big story at the time. 
I remember even BitBoy was talking about it and other YouTubers. Oh, the SEC is, they're hampering growth. They're hampering growth. They're not letting Coinbase become a lending platform because I remember people were pissed off about it because Coinbase was going to offer like 4% on Ethereum and 5% on Cardano. And that pissed people off because they weren't allowed to do it. That's why, folks because they were gonna co-mingle your money and lose it all. They would have lost everything. Coinbase would, be, would have gone under right now. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin would be like $5,000. The whole market would be in shambles. So the SEC has done good. The SEC has protected people. Can they, protect, can they do more? Absolutely. And I think they will do more this year. But it's like the cops. It's like the FBI. Just because there's an FBI doesn't mean there's not gonna be bank robberies. Just because there's a bunch of cops doesn't mean you're not gonna get robbed or murdered. But you have to have them. And it does sound like 2023 is going to be a lot of enforcement for the SEC. So, all right, folks, I'm going to do a part two later. This is a very interesting interview. It just came out. And this lays out exactly what's going to happen in crypto for the next year. So um, there's no speculation anymore. I mean, that's what's going to happen. If you want to be safe, just buy Bitcoin. Because I think you're going to see a big Bitcoin run up when everybody gets out a lot of these altcoins and um, gets into Bitcoin. But I do think the good altcoins like Cardano, Ethereum, Theta, you go down the list, Polymatic, they're all going to do very, very well, but they're, pro they're going to have to register as securities to operate in the United States, just like your stocks would. Same with XRP. You know, BitBoy's been telling you XRP is not going to be a security and they're going to win the SEC, um, the SEC uh, litigation. I don't think it's going to happen, folks. I just don't. I think all of these altcoins are going to get labeled as security. Stop listening to the dumb money. Stop listening to the fat crackheads out there giving you advice. All you got to do is listen, listen, don't listen to me. Listen to Gary Gensler. That's the guy you want to listen to. Not fatty, not fatty boy, former crackhead. Gary Gensler, that's who you want to listen to. Not crypto banter from South Africa who spent years shilling you scams. He doesn't know, no, Gary Gensler. If you want to know what's happening, going to happen with your money and crypto, Gary Gensler is who you listen to, not the scammers. The scammers have no authority over the government. And they have no power to regulate anything. Gary Gensler, folks. All right, folks, I'm going to do another video. I'm going to do a part two later. This is a great interview. It's just very long and, and time consuming. Like and subscribe. Talk to you later.